the principles of water fluoridation for dummies. That's what I'm going to call this. So I'm not, not aiming this at your audience, but you actually have to take it back to that. I was thinking about the books about programming for dummies or computer language for dummies, water fluoridation for dummies. I'm just going to show the very basics because it's this simple. It's primary level school maths. It's, you don't even have to count to 10 with regards to do the numerical calculations to show how stupid water fluoridation is. Step one, before you commence a mass fluoridation program, determine the total exposure of the population to fluoride from all dietary sources, including beverages, food, and medications. The WHO, and in any risk assessment, before you introduce a new toxin, you should determine what is the exposure of the population. It never happened in Ireland. So they introduced fluoridation in the 1960s in Ireland with no study done to determine what is the fluoride exposure of the population. They just went ahead and did it. Step two, if the population or subgroups of the population already have a high fluoride intake from other sources, do not expose them to further risk by artificially fluoridating the public water supply. So you, just go, you don't continue to step three. What is our exposure to fluoride in Ireland in terms of a population? Levels of daily exposure to fluoride, this is from the WHO in 1996, they say, depend on the geographical area. If diets contain tea, exposure may be particularly high. That's what they stated, right? Two peer-reviewed published human exposure assessments on fluoride that have been undertaken. One in Food Research International last year, Human Exposure Assessment of Fluoride from Tea in the UK. They measured the level of fluoride in 38 brands of tea. Every brand that was on sale in the UK. What they found. UK supermarket economy teas contained elevated fluoride ranging from 3.6 to 8 milligrams per litre. This study used ultra-pure deionized water to measure the fluoride level. So they weren't making it with tap water. And it, they mentioned that in some areas of the UK, drinking water is artificially fluoridated to about one, mar, one milligram per litre, such as in Birmingham or Coventry, which would further add to the level of fluoride in tea, right? They drink a lot of tea in the UK, right? This study indicates fluoride concentrations can exceed the dietary reference intake of four milligrams per day, which is for a man, and 3.5, or three milligrams per day for a woman. In certain tea commodities, if you just leave it sit for more than two minutes, right? Or under two minutes. Considering these case studies, fluoride concentrations found in the present study would lead to detrimental health conditions in a human, especially if consuming in excess of a liter of economy branded tea per day. Tea per day. Four cups of tea a day, and you could have detrimental health conditions associated with fluoride toxicity, and they fluoridate the water supply in parts of the UK and Birmingham and Coventry, right? Um, the population who are socioeconomically disadvantaged and use economy labelled foods are more at risk from fluoride toxicity because they buy the cheaper brands of tea. And the cheaper brands of tea have the higher rates, have doubled the rates of uh, the concentrations of fluoride. Most of the fluoride was released into the tea infusion is available for absorption by the human system, system and can partly or completely fulfill the recommended, daily recommended intake of four milligrams per day. For an adult, it's three milligrams per day. So you're getting the total amount with regards to the dietary recommended intake just from drinking tea, nothing else. So if you just drank tea four cups a day and nothing else, didn't brush your teeth, didn't do anything else, you're already getting what they regard as the dietary uh, ref, uh, the, the recommended level. All tea products should be considered as the main source of fluoride in the diet, is what they found. Supermarkets and manufacturers of tea should consider stating fluoride concentrations as part of the nutritional information found in food packaging. There is a law in Europe that if you sell bottled water that contains more than 1.5 milligrams of fluoride, it must be labelled on the bottle. Yet there are tea products sold in Ireland that contain up to 8 milligrams per litre of fluoride. And you cannot find the fluoride level anywhere in the literature. The levels that they got in the economy brands, there's green teas, black teas, different types of teas. The highest was actually up, up about 8.5 milligrams is what they found. Now these are Tesco economy brands and British multinational chains that are on sale in Ireland. 
So when you go into supermarkets in Ireland and outside of the Barry's and Lion's Tea, that's the same tea that they're selling, right? In Taiwan, the Department of Public Health in Taiwan did a study in 2003 looking at the fluoride levels of tea. The mean fluoride level ranged from 5 to 25 milligrams per litre. Most of the intake concentrations in those samples exceeded 4 milligrams per litre of fluoride. The lower bound of fluoride levels reported in literature to be associated with lower IQ in children and higher risk of bone fracture. What they found was that elderly people are the most at risk because most of their beverage intake is tea, not water. Uh, they talked about children, like one, one 300 mil of certain beverages per week would be the equivalent, would meet the adequate dietary intake for a child. So one cup of certain teas. The fluoride intake concentrations of tea samples were all much higher, 4 to 41 times of the optimal level that the WHO talk about in water, which is 0.7 to 1.2. And then they said, recently, the Taiwanese government were considering adding fluoride to the drinking water supply, but due to the high accessibility of tea drinks in Taiwan, it was very likely that sufficient fluoride is obtained from tea drinks alone. So they shouldn't go ahead with it. They did another study in 2008, potential exposure of fluoride from tea in Taiwan. 52 tea samples, 210 approximately infusions tested. What they found, again using deionized water, the highest was 8.6 plus or minus 2, so 10 milligrams per liter was the highest that they found in it. Uh, they found that adding sugar to tea doubled the infusion of fluoride from the tea. So if you drink, if you have tea with sugar, it increased the leaching of, of fluoride from the tea into your tea infusion, going from four, from two to four in that case, in terms of a mean, uh, and that would happen in the first few minutes. Um, they talked about some people using five mugs to drink tea in Ireland. We, we, don't, we almost, a mug wouldn't even be sufficient for some people in Ireland. Um, they would drink liters of tea, uh, that the maximum, the reasonable maximum exposure in terms of for, for people who drink a lot would be up to 20 liters per week, right? That would be the, the top of the range in terms of the exposure risk, right? And they said in their study, the mean intake per capita for adults in Canada, the US, and England is 1.5 to 3 liters in, in Canada, 0.8 to 1.2 in the United States, 4 to 4.5 in the UK per week, 4.5 litres. Um, tea lovers in the UK, they should be cautious about the potential dental and skeletal fluorosis risks because of the fluoride intake from tea, right? Furthermore, tea drinkers who like strongly brewed tea, they're higher risk because the stronger the brew the tea, the, the higher the concentration. Uh, and again, they said their work was using deionized water because the natural level of fluoride in Taiwan is between 0 0.01 and 0.28, so that the fluoride intakes would be much higher if you have higher levels of fluoride in the water. They also mentioned that, again, it's very likely that sufficient fluoride is already obtained from tea and from other sources such as toothpaste, so you shouldn't be fluoridating the water supply. Now, the European Food Safety Authority in 2006 published a report in which they said that if a person drank, if they lived in a fluoridated area, drank two liters of water per day, two cups of tea, that the fluoride intake would be uh, about 3.5 to 4 milligrams added to the additional dietary intake from other sources. So they'd be getting 3.5 to 4 on top of the other sources of fluoride, right? The EFSA, the EFSA said that it, dietary intakes could be up to 6 milligrams per day without fluoride from toothpaste being taken into account and that even more extreme scenarios are possible and not completely unrealistic. Now, the optimal for a woman is 3 milligrams. The optimal for a man is 4 milligrams. They're saying 2 cups of tea a day, it's up to 6, not including fluoridated toothpaste. Now, the North-South North Food Survey done by various universities in Ireland published as a paper they said that the average person in Ireland drinks four cups of tea a day and that we drink 5.2 billion cups of tea per annum. Uh, in Ireland, 91% of adults 
our tea consumers with a mean daily intake of 620 mils and a 95 percentile intake of 1.25 litres. So 5% of the population drink more than 1.2 litres of tea per day. The Food Safety Authority in 2011 published this report looking at dietary intakes with regards to fluoride and other uh, substances in the Irish diet. And they said that the total, the average adult consumer in the Republic of Ireland would cons consuming fluoridated water as well as fluoridated foodstuffs and other beverages is just 1.8 to 2 milligrams per day. Now, when I saw that data, I asked the Food Safety Authority to provide me with their, their, their data on a spreadsheet. They sent me their spreadsheet data and I looked at it immediately and saw that their calculations with regards to the fluoride levels in foodstuffs were out by about tenfold. It's like they'd missed a decimal point. And I said to them, you cannot have a fluoride level in tea of 0.4 milligrams per litre, which is half what is in fluoridated water because you're making the tea with fluoridated water, so how can you have 0.4 milligrams of fluoride in tea? What sample of tea did you analyze? Where is the quality control sheets with regards to who took the sample? Uh, what was the brand of tea that they sampled? How many samples did they take? How many different brands of tea did they make, did they test? Was it the mean of all the teas that this fluoride level was based on? And they didn't know, they couldn't provide me with any information. What they did tell me though, was that it wasn't the Food Safety Authority of Ireland who took the sample, it was an unnamed person in the, college of Dent in the UCC Dental College who took the sample of tea and sent it to the UK. So I asked who, who took the sample, they don't know. Again, what was the sample of tea? They don't know. How many samples did they take? One. So the risk assessment for the entire population of Ireland in terms of fluoride exposure is based on a single bag of tea that nobody knows what the brand is and that is most certainly not black tea. It's a herbal tea. Now, that can only be deliberate. That can only be a cover-up because if the fluoride levels of teas were actually properly measured, you would have to stop as a measure of immediate public health risk fluoridation of the water supply in Ireland. Unquestionably, you would have to stop it.